Welcome to this exploration into ethics as it relates to artificial intelligence and machine learning. As AI becomes more and more useful, it becomes imperative for us to understand not only its technicalities, but the profound ethical dimensions surrounding it. Should AI have rights similar to human beings? Is there an inherent bias in the algorithms that control AI systems? These questions and many more will be addressed in this course from Seth Golden. Seth will talk to you about the societal, economic, and philosophical aspects of AI. Seth is a software engineer and data scientist, and in this course, he also is joined by a few important guest speakers. Hey everyone, welcome to the Ethics of AI and ML. My name is Seth Golden, and I'm excited to be your guide through an overview of AI ethics and machine learning. Should AI systems have personhood? Is AI biased? As AI permeates every facet of our lives, from healthcare and education to finance and entertainment, the significance of AI ethics becomes ever more paramount. The potential consequences of neglecting these ethical considerations can range from mere inconveniences to severe societal ramifications. Our journey together will uncover the foundations of artificial intelligence, its applications, and the ethical questions that shape this transformative field. Along the way, we're incredibly lucky to be also joined by a few guest speakers, including Okezwe Bell from Bitterdam, an organization mobilizing over 1,400 people for tech issues, the development, policy, and education, and Sneha Revenar from Encode Justice, a youth-powered movement for human-centered artificial intelligence. And, of course, a huge thank you to Free Code Camp for supporting the development of this course. Let's begin. In this video course, We'll define AI and its various types and delve into techniques, subfields, ethics, and real-world applications. We'll examine not just the tech itself, but also its implications on society, economy, and global development. This is not a technical course. There's plenty of amazing, incredible AI programming content on Free Code Camp, if that's what you're looking for. Instead, we're going to focus on how AI is currently being used how it might be used, and how we can ensure that it's employed in a way that benefits humanity. As this course presupposes no prior knowledge of AI or ML, we're going to define a bunch of terms and concepts like AI and ML. If you're already really comfortable with topics like neural networks or natural language processing, you can feel free to skip part two, the basics of AI and ML. So what are you going to get out of this video? Our journey is more than just talking about technology. It's a holistic, broader view. By the end of our time together, you'll have a grounding in the basics of AI, from the algorithms that power it to the applications that make it so revolutionary. We won't stop at just understanding the mechanics. It's about ethics, values, and the real-world implications that make AI not only a scientific marvel, but a philosophical, moral, and societal challenge. Hi everyone, my name is Okazoe Bell and I'm a student at Stanford and the founder of FIDUTOM, one of the world's largest civil society groups working on the many limbs of building and regulating responsible technology, especially AI. I'll be speaking on a couple of topics in this course with arguably the most important question to start off with. What is AI? A common misconception is that the term AI is typically confined to high functioning systems like ChatGPT, for example. But in reality, it can be as simple as a pre-programmed chatbot, as complex as Google or TikTok's content recommendation algorithms, or as consequential as disease or crime risk prediction systems. While the connotation of AI varies across academia and industry, it typically refers to systems that use math to provide automotive, generative, or predictive outputs or functions. So. AI, at its highest level, is about crafting algorithms that allow machines to perform tasks, typically requiring human intelligence. This includes learning from data, reasoning logically, solving problems, perceiving the environment, and even understanding human languages. AI's applications are not confined to a single domain. They stretch across various fields, both in general spheres and within the nuanced arena of international development. 
AI's ability to analyze massive data sets enables more informed decisions in government policy, but also in very different spaces, such as finance and climate tech. It's transforming healthcare as well, ranging from enhancing diagnosis to personalizing treatment, especially providing vital support in under-resourced areas. Artificial intelligence is reshaping the educational landscape through personalized learning, adaptive content, and making e-learning accessible even in remote regions. And its influence on recruiting and employment follows a similar trend, redefining practices through tailored solutions and technological innovation. Even agriculture is witnessing an AI-driven revolution. We're optimizing farming techniques for higher yields and supporting small-scale farmers with AI-driven insights are just the beginning of what's possible. In the second half of this course, we'll delve deeper into some of these areas. While this course offers a comprehensive overview, I have consciously chosen to keep it open to all ages, apolitical, and non-US centric. So some applications of AI, such as those in elections and voting or the creation of adult content, won't be discussed in detail. If you find these topics intriguing, links to resources for further exploration will be provided in the description of this video. So, the big question. Why should you care? Why watch the rest of this video course? To start, unethical AI practices have the potential to result in widespread discrimination. AI systems are only as unbiased as the data that they are trained on. If these systems are trained on unrepresentative data, they can unintentionally perpetuate and amplify existing societal biases. This can lead to discriminatory outcomes in vital areas such as employment, lending, and many more, potentially disadvantageous to certain groups based on factors like race, gender, or socioeconomic status. Trying to solve a problem or end a pattern of human-driven discrimination using artificial intelligence often backfires because algorithms are designed to imitate human behavior, not deviate from it. Alignment in the context of AI refers to the endeavor to ensure that AI system objectives, actions, and outcomes are in harmony with human values and goals. Misaligned AI systems pose a significant risk because their objectives may not coincide with ours, leading to unintended and potentially harmful outcomes. Consider, for instance, a hypothetical superintelligent AI whose primary objective is to optimize paperclip production. If not properly aligned, such an artificial intelligence could consume all available resources, including vital ones necessary for human survival, to achieve its goal of maximum paperclip production, effectively leading to a catastrophic scenario for humanity. This extreme example, often referred to as the paperclip maximizer thought experiment, underlines the potential severity of AI misalignment. What that means is that it is incumbent upon us to ensure the development of AI systems aligns with human values and interests, and rigorous ethical scrutiny is applied to prevent any worst-case scenario from becoming a reality. If developed and deployed ethically, AI systems can serve as powerful tools for societal good. They can promote fairness by making unbiased decisions. They can enhance commercial accountability by ensuring transparency and foster inclusivity by providing personalized solutions to diverse populations. From assisting doctors in diagnosing diseases to helping educators provide personalized learning experiences, ethical AI has the potential to improve countless lives and create a more equitable society. And yet, the importance of AI ethics extends beyond immediate outcomes. AI is poised to be a defining technology of our future with the potential to reshape our social fabric, economy, and global order. As developers, users, policymakers, and most importantly, as humans, we are all stakeholders in this future. 
And so it's our shared responsibility to ensure that AI technologies are developed and used in ways that align with our ethical values and mitigate harm. Understanding AI ethics is not just about preventing negative outcomes, but rather actively working towards a future where AI serves as a tool for human flourishing. So the study of AI ethics encouraged us to not just ask what can we do with AI, but what should we do? It pushes us to consider how we can harness AI's immense potential responsibly in a way that respects our shared human values, promotes those equitable outcomes, and contributes to a better future for all of us. AI ethics, therefore, is not just important, it's essential. Are you excited yet? We're just getting started. Next, we're going to explore the basics of AI and ML. Now, we are going beyond the surface to explore AI types and techniques, including machine learning, or ML in particular. We'll demystify how algorithms can learn from data, explore the architecture behind neural networks, and look at how different algorithms serve different purposes. In the world of artificial intelligence, we commonly speak of three main types of AI. The first is narrow or weak AI, such as Siri or Alexa, designed to perform specific tasks. Though quite skilled in their specific areas, these systems can't go beyond their defined scope. Moving up the ladder, we find general AI, or strong AI, a theoretical concept of machines with the ability to perform any intellectual task that a human can. It's an ambitious goal that we are still striving to achieve, although recent models such as Google's Gato are getting closer. Finally, there's the concept of superintelligent AI, which would surpass human intelligence entirely having the ability to learn and understand any task. It's a thrilling and futuristic idea, but it also brings up deep ethical and philosophical questions. Most AI researchers believe we're still a ways away from anything resembling superintelligent AI. But as we'll discuss more later, once you hit that point, things begin moving pretty quickly. Together, we'll explore each of these types of AI in greater detail throughout the rest of this video. In the realm of artificial intelligence, several techniques enable machines to emulate human-like intelligence. First, we have machine learning, or ML, which is a core technique allowing systems to learn from experience and improve over time. Unlike traditional programming, where instructions are explicitly given, ML enables systems to adapt and evolve by themselves. As you can see in the diagram, the core difference is in the inputs and the outputs. With a normal program, you write the program and give it input, and it runs to create the output. With ML, you give a model input and what you want the output to look like, and then it figures out what the program should look like to obtain that. Here's some examples. Email filtering. Machine learning algorithms analyze thousands of emails learning the common characteristics of spam, such as certain phrases, patterns, or sender profiles. The model iteratively refines its understanding, becoming a virtual expert in spam detection. So, you know, that's why Gmail is so good. Movie recommendations. Services like Netflix use ML to analyze your viewing history, ratings, and behavior to predict what you might like to watch next. The model considers various factors like genres, directors, actors, and even the time you usually watch to offer personalized recommendations. The more you interact, the more tailored those recommendations become. These examples showcase the adaptability of machine learning, learning from patterns and providing actionable insights or automation. As technology evolves, we can expect to see even more applications that leverage the predictive power of machine learning. Next, there's deep learning, an advanced approach inspired by the human brain's complex neural networks. Unlike traditional machine learning, which can work with simpler algorithms, deep learning involves multiple layers of interconnected nodes that process information in a hierarchical manner. 
This allows deep learning models to automatically extract features and handle more complex tasks. Deep learning has paved the way for advancements in areas like facial recognition and natural language processing. Here's some examples of deep learning. Facial recognition. Deep learning algorithms, particularly convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, which we'll talk more about later, have revolutionized facial recognition technology. By analyzing thousands of facial features and patterns, these models can identify and verify individuals with high accuracy. Another popular one to talk about, autonomous driving. Deep learning plays a crucial role in enabling self-driving cars to navigate and make decisions. By processing vast amounts of data from cameras, sensors, and radar, deep neural networks can recognize objects, pedestrians, and other vehicles, can understand traffic signs, and make real-time driving decisions. Finally, we have natural language processing, or NLP, which serves as a bridge between human communication and machine understanding. While traditional machine learning may require manual feature extraction for text data, NLP uses both statistical and deep learning techniques to automatically interpret, respond to, and even generate human languages. This enables a more nuanced understanding of language, including syntax, semantics, and context. As we continue, we'll delve into specific examples of each of these techniques to provide a concrete understanding of how they function and their significant roles in our technology-driven world. Two examples of natural language processing would be chatbots or virtual assistants. Natural language processing enables chatbots and assistants like Siri or Alexa to understand and respond to human language. By analyzing syntax, semantics, and context, these systems can engage in conversation, answer questions, and perform tasks based on voice or text commands. Sentiment analysis is another one. Businesses often use natural language processing to analyze customer feedback, reviews, and social media comments to gauge public sentiment about products or services. By understanding the nuances of language, including tone and emotion and sarcasm, natural language processing algorithms can provide insights into customer satisfaction and preferences. Within the diverse and expansive realm of AI, there are also many even more specialized sub-areas, each contributing uniquely to that field. Generative AI is one such area that has recently captured the imagination of millions of people. From the conversational prowess of ChatGPT to the mathematical assistance of Photomath, NLP is enabling machines to understand, interpret, and generate human languages. The subfield enhances the way that we interact with technology, making it more intuitive, responsive, and human-like. Computer vision is another fascinating subfield dedicated to teaching computers to perceive and interpret the visual world. It's the driving force behind groundbreaking innovations like self-driving cars and facial recognition systems. Another field near and dear to my heart is robotics, a field that merges AI with mechanical design, revolutionizing industries from healthcare to manufacturing. Neural networks, inspired by our brain's architecture, are at the center of many AI applications. On a simplistic high level, a neural network is like a virtual brain that helps computers learn from data. Imagine you're teaching it to recognize a cat. You show it many pictures, some of cats and some of other things. The network makes guesses and you correct it. The brain has layers of neurons that work together. The first layer looks at basic things like lines and colors. The next layers combine these basics to recognize shapes like ears and tails. And the final layer puts it all together to say, this is a cat. Over time, with more pictures and corrections, the network gets better at recognizing cats. It's like learning to ride a bike. You get better with practice. Now, for a more technical breakdown, neural networks consist of interconnected layers of nodes or neurons. Each neuron receives an input, processes it using a mathematical function, and passes the output to the next layer. Here's what that looks like. First, the network's input layer receives the raw data, 
such as pixel values of an image. Each neuron corresponds to one feature, like a pixel's color intensity. Then there are hidden layers, which contain neurons that perform computations. Each neuron's input is a weighted sum of the previous layer's outputs, plus a bias term. The weights and biases are the parameters that the network learns through training. The weighted sum is then passed through an activation function like sigmoid. This introduces nonlinearity, allowing the network to learn complex patterns. Finally, the output layer produces the final prediction. For classification tasks, a softmax function might be used to convert the final layer's outputs into probabilities. Networks are trained using a dataset by repeatedly making predictions and comparing them to the true labels. The differences between the predictions and the true values are measured using a loss function. The weights and biases are then updated using an optimization algorithm like gradient descent. This process iteratively adjusts the parameters to minimize the loss in proving the network's predictions. The key to understanding the training of neural networks is an algorithm called backpropagation. It calculates the gradients of the loss function with respect to each weight and bias by applying the chain rule. Remember that from calculus? These gradients are used to update the parameters in the direction that reduces the loss. In other words, a neural network learns to make predictions by adjusting its internal parameters based on the feedback it receives. It's a highly iterative and computational process that enables a network to learn complex mappings from inputs to outputs. Okay, cool. But what can you actually do with them? First, handwriting. Systems like those used by postal services to read addresses utilize neural networks to translate complex handwriting into standardized text. They analyze individual strokes, curves, and spacing, learning to recognize various handwriting styles. Another one, voice command recognition. Smart devices, like Siri, use neural networks to understand that spoken language. These networks analyze the sound waves, breaking them down into components that represent different aspects of speech, like tone, pitch, and accent. And yet another one, fraud detection. Networks analyze spending patterns, geographical locations, and time to detect suspicious activity. If an unexpected pattern emerges, it might flag a transaction for review. Now, let's look at a few different kinds of networks. Recurrent neural networks, or RNNs, are designed for sequential data, making them suitable for applications like weather forecasting and real-time language translation. Unlike traditional neural networks, RNNs have connections that loop back on themselves, allowing information to persist. This looping mechanism enables them to remember previous inputs in the sequence, thereby understanding the context and making informed predictions about future data. For example, in language translation, RNNs can learn the syntax, grammar, and context of a sentence, providing more accurate translations. Convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, are tailored for visual tasks and are widely used in medical diagnostics and autonomous vehicles. CNNs utilize convolutional layers that apply filters to the input data, detecting local patterns such as edges and textures. These detected features are then pooled and passed through fully connected layers to make final predictions. In medical diagnostics, CNNs can detect tumors in x-rays or MRI scans by recognizing subtle patterns that might be missed by human eyes. In autonomous vehicles, they interpret the visual world, allowing the car to navigate its environment. Generative adversarial networks, or GANs, consist of two competing networks, a generator and a discriminator. The generator creates content such as images, while the discriminator evaluates the generated content against real data. They are trained together in a cat and mouse game where the generator tries to produce realistic content and the discriminator tries to distinguish between the real content and the generated content. In the world of art, GANs have created entirely new pieces by learning from historical art styles. In gaming, 
they generate realistic landscapes and characters. Transformers, such as the Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, or GPT models, are a significant advancement in neural networks, particularly for NLP. Unlike RNNs, transformers use attention mechanisms that weigh the importance of different parts of the input, allowing them to capture long-range dependencies in data. This enables them to understand the context of words in a sentence, even if they are far apart. GPT models have been employed in various applications, from writing assistants to complex question-answering systems, showcasing the power of neural networks in understanding and emulating human language. There are dozens of other networks, including many other extremely popular ones, but the networks we've discussed adequately showcase the breadth of AI's capabilities, from creative endeavors to life-saving medical applications. Data sets are the lifeblood of machine learning, providing the raw material for that learning. Let's explore two different types. Let's start with images. For facial recognition, a data set might include thousands of faces, each tagged with an identity. The system learns to identify unique facial features and expressions. Another example would be sentiment analysis, where text models like product reviews or social media posts are analyzed to gauge public sentiment. These data sets can help in understanding the nuances of human language and emotion. The quality and integrity of a data set are really important. Biased or unbalanced data can lead to flawed models, raising critical ethical considerations, which we'll discuss way more later. As one example, take this image of a data set of puppies and chicken tenders. The meme illustrates how challenging it can be for an AI model such as a convolutional neural network to differentiate between objects that have similar visual characteristics. While humans can usually tell the difference based on context and experience, AI models might struggle. It also underscores the importance of diverse and representative training data. If a model has not been exposed to enough variations of puppies and chicken tenders, it may not have learned the subtle features that distinguish them. It also points to the complexity of feature extraction in image recognition. Identifying the essential characteristics that differentiate a puppy from a chicken tender is a non-trivial task. Sometimes the process of learning features can be problematic, especially with deep learning algorithms. Since these systems determine and distinguish features independently without any explicit programming, they sometimes discover incorrect yet true patterns in data. Let me give you an example. A neural network trained to identify malignant skin lesions observed that many medical images of cancerous lesions included a ruler for scale. Instead of learning the nuanced differences between benign and malignant lesions in terms of their medical features, it trained itself to look for the presence of a ruler given the trends in the training images. So, it mistakenly learned to associate the presence of a ruler in an image with the likelihood of the lesion being malignant. As a result, the AI performed super well in the training data, but when presented with real-world tumor images that didn't adhere to this ruler coincidence, as you could expect, it failed miserably. Not only is having broad training data important to building safe and effective AI, but so is being able to track its decision-making processes. Doing so enables the AI to learn general, more accurate features, and also helps developers explain and fix pain points or causes of error. AI is groundbreaking, but not without its limitations. There are several challenges that we've yet to overcome for large language models to reach their full potential. Speed is one of those. Gigantic models are powerful, but they're also slow. Faster response times will be necessary as we aim to apply these technologies in more production settings. Another one would be bias. Large language models are trained on data from the internet. Unfortunately, that includes a lot of content warped by our human subjectivity, leading to LLMs returning results that reflect a lack of diversity, as well as being capable of generating extremist content. Even software developers with the best intentions will unconsciously make choices that cause AI to portray similar worldviews. Outside of large language models, 
One of the most eye-opening studies that brought this issue to the forefront was conducted by ProPublica, a nonprofit investigative journalism organization. They looked into an algorithm used in the U.S. criminal justice system to predict which individuals are likely to commit crimes again, a concept known as recidivism. The ProPublica study revealed that this recidivism-predicting algorithm had a troubling bias against African Americans. In simple terms, the algorithm was more likely to wrongly predict that African American individuals would commit future crimes compared to white individuals. On the flip side, it was also more likely to incorrectly assume that white individuals were at low risk of reoffending. These inaccuracies are not just numbers, they have real world consequences such as unfairly extended prison sentences or denied opportunities for parole. This study serves as a wake up call about the ethical challenges in AI. It emphasizes the need for fairness, transparency, and accountability when we use algorithms to make important decisions, especially in sensitive areas like criminal justice. The findings from ProPublica have ignited debates and calls for action to rigorously evaluate and audit AI algorithms, ensuring they don't perpetuate existing societal biases. It's a stark reminder that as we move forward with technological advancements, we must also be vigilant in safeguarding ethical standards. Another limitation is hallucinations. When given a prompt it doesn't understand, generative AI will often respond absurdly with content that is certified bullshark. Importantly, it's difficult to check the validity of such text. This is a critical issue for large language models that makes it very difficult to use them for fact checking and essay writing. Another one, plagiarism. Because the most notable LLMs are trained on billions of parameters, they have plenty of examples to draw from. While many of the generated responses are legitimately original, there are also some that can be found verbatim on the web. This makes large language models problematic when used in academic settings. We must construct improved mechanisms for detecting and handling AI plagiarism. Undesirable content is a huge limitation. For most of the web's history, the majority of content has been limited to what a human could author. Large language models remove that restriction. Disinformation is the deliberate spreading of false or misleading information, often with the intent to deceive or manipulate public opinion. The capabilities of LLMs to generate text that is indistinguishable from that written by humans have made them a powerful tool for propagating disinformation. For example, these models can be used to create fake news articles, sometimes called read fakes, false narratives, or misleading social media posts at a scale and speed that were previously unimaginable. The danger here is not just the volume of false information, but also its potential to be highly targeted and convincing, thereby sowing discord, undermining trust in institutions, and even influencing things as important as elections. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things. So, uh, for instance, they could have me say things like, I don't know, Killmonger was right. Deepfakes take disinformation to another level by using deep learning algorithms to create hyper-realistic videos where people appear to say or do things that they never actually did. These manipulated videos can be incredibly convincing, making it difficult for the average viewer to distinguish between what is real and what is fabricated. Deepfakes have been used for various malicious purposes, from character assassination and fake news dissemination to fraud and blackmail. The technology poses a significant threat to personal privacy and public trust as it can be used to create entirely false narratives that are almost impossible to debunk in a timely manner. Both disinformation and deepfakes represent a dark side of artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies. They underscore the urgent need for ethical guidelines, robust verification tools, and public awareness to combat these emerging threats. As these technologies continue to evolve, the challenge will be to balance the incredible potential for innovation and positive impact against the risks of misuse and harm. 
House so empty, need a centerpiece. Twenty racks of table cut from ebony. Cut that ivory into skinny pieces. Then she clean it with her face. Man, I love my beta. You talking money, need a hearing aid. You talking about me, I don't see a shade. Switch up my side, like to get me laid. I switch up my car if I keep any pain. When someone uses AI to write an article or create a painting or sing a song, who does it belong to? Can the person who generated it claim ownership? There's a lot of new legal questions that have yet to be answered by our aging laws. For example, if I train a model on your paintings and then it makes more that look similar, do I need to compensate you for that? Or if I use samples of Taylor Swift's music to generate more pop or country, do I owe her a songwriting credit? My current view, shared by an awesome professor who specializes in copyright, is that as of now, AI-generated images will be considered derivative works of whatever they were trained on. Another limitation, or thing to think about, is alignment. Our large language models aligned with human values and following human intent. We'll need to continue training AI systems using human feedback to ensure that the systems we're building bring about more positive than negative consequences. I'm going to discuss alignment further in a bit. The black box problem refers to the challenge of understanding complex ML models. Imagine a model predicting creditworthiness, where the input is the applicant's financial history and employment status, and the output is a recommendation to approve or deny the loan. Do you see the black box? The mathematical computations between input and output are hidden, often involving hundreds of variables and nonlinear transformations. This opacity can create ethical and practical challenges. In healthcare, if a model predicts a disease, doctors need to know why to provide proper care. In legal settings, transparency is usually required for fairness. The black box problem represents the two core issues that AI systems have. If you take only a few things away from this course, let this be one of them. We do not understand why AI makes the decisions that it does. And once AI makes a decision, we do not know if that decision was the best one. The issue is it's a feedback loop. We're not going to talk about predictive policing much in this course, but one relevant application is when a police department might use AI to determine where to send their patrol cars. An AI model might determine that there are hotspots in three neighborhoods. So the cops are sent to those three places. They find crime. They report back there was crime. Success, right? Except they didn't go to the other places, so they won't know whether or not they would have found crime going elsewhere. AI is always right if you don't ever check if it's wrong. To see why it's difficult to verify results, here's another example. A school system might use AI to determine which teachers to hire or fire. Let's say it decides to fire one teacher. Since the algorithm is a black box, the teacher can't appeal to the system. And because the teacher was fired, we'll never know if their students would have performed better the next year. There may have been confounding variables the AI didn't consider. We've discussed at length how AI works, and now with the black box problem, we're starting to explore the ethical implications bit. But first, let's actually go over some ethical and decision frameworks that we can then apply to artificial intelligence. Ethical frameworks serve as guiding compasses in the complex landscape of morality and ethics. They're not just theoretical constructs, but deeply ingrained in our culture, legal systems, and individual beliefs. These frameworks help us navigate moral dilemmas, providing tools to identify, analyze, and resolve ethical issues. In the context of AI, they become instrumental in guiding design, development, and deployment, ensuring that technology aligns with our societal values and principles. Consequentialism focuses on the outcomes or consequences of actions, assessing them as right or wrong based on their effect, 
A common form, utilitarianism, argues for maximizing happiness or welfare across society. In the AI context, a consequentialist approach might prioritize systems that optimize efficiency, accessibility, or overall societal well-being, even if that means compromising on individual privacy or autonomy. Think of algorithms that predict health risks. They might save lives, but raise questions about personal data usage. The trolley problem is a thought experiment highlighting these moral dilemmas. Imagine a runaway trolley. You control the switch that can divert it onto one of two tracks. One has five people, the other has one. What do you do? This problem becomes more intricate in AI like in self-driving cars. If an accident is imminent, how should the car react? Save the passengers or the pedestrians? Different ethical frameworks may lead to different decisions. The trolley problem exemplifies the real-world ethical challenges that AI developers face. Deontological ethics, yay Kant, focuses on the intrinsic morality of actions, not their results. A deontological perspective might view lying as always wrong, even if it leads to a good outcome. In AI, this approach could manifest in absolute rules around data privacy or non-discrimination. For example, an algorithm must never use race as a factor in a decision, even if statistically it could improve accuracy. This rigid rule-based approach has strengths in creating clear guidelines, but might lack flexibility in more complex real-world scenarios. Virtue ethics emphasizes character traits and virtues that lead to good moral behavior. It's about becoming a good person, not just following rules or achieving good outcomes. In AI, this could translate into building systems that encourage positive human values like empathy, creativity, or collaboration. Imagine a virtual tutor that not only teaches mathematics, but also encourages curiosity and resilience in students. Virtue ethics brings a human-centered approach, aligning technology with our aspirations for personal growth and societal harmony. Contract-based ethics views morality as a set of rules or agreements made by rational individuals. In political philosophy, social contract theory has been influential. In AI, this might translate into transparent agreements between AI providers and users about data handling, algorithmic bias, or accountability. The recent calls for regulation and standardization in AI can be seen as attempts to formalize these contracts, ensuring that the technology serves the public interest while respecting individual rights. Applying these ethical frameworks to AI is a multifaceted task involving developers, regulators, and users. By using consequentialist ethics, we might evaluate an AI system's deployment based on the happiness or efficiency it generates. Deontological principles might demand strict adherence to privacy norms. Virtue ethics could push us to create technology that uplifts human dignity, and contract-based ethics could seek to formalize relationships between different stakeholders. The ethical design of AI is not just about avoiding harm, but about crafting technology that embodies our highest values and aspirations. As we discussed briefly before, AI alignment represents the critical challenge of ensuring that AI systems understand and align with human values and intentions. It's a multifaceted issue with various methods to address, each catering to different contexts and ethical considerations. The value alignment approach seeks to program AI directly with human ethics, acting according to clearly defined values. Meanwhile, inverse reinforcement learning takes a more observational stance, where AI learns human preferences by watching human behavior. Interpretable AI emphasizes the importance of creating models that can be understood and interpreted by humans allowing for increased scrutiny and control. In other words, not a black box. Other methodologies encompass broader strategies, top-down approaches involve incorporating human values directly into AI's design, utilizing expert knowledge and moral philosophy, where on the other hand, bottom-up approaches 
allow AI to learn from data, including human reactions and decisions to model human values effectively. A hybrid approach combines these strategies, utilizing human-crafted rules and data-driven learning to create adaptable guidance systems. Lastly, the collaborative approaches encourage continuous human AI collaboration and oversight. This method implements systems allowing ongoing human intervention and adjustment, recognizing that human values may evolve and alignment must be continuously maintained. The choice of approach will depend on the specific application and societal context, reflecting the complex and vital nature of this aspect of AI development. Next, we'll dive into the Turing test, an idea so profound it has fundamentally shaped our understanding of artificial intelligence. There's a reason computers are also known as Turing machines. Picture this. You're in a conversation with two unseen participants, one human and the other a machine. Alan Turing asked whether it's possible for you to determine which is which purely based on their responses. This is not an intellectual game. It's a quest to define the very nature of thought and understanding. If a machine can respond like a human, is it thinking? Does it possess consciousness or intellect? What does this tell us about ourselves and the nature of intelligence? Imagine you were the evaluator. What questions would you ask? What answers would convince you? This isn't just about technology, it's about redefining what it means to be sentient. Let's try it. Consider the following questions. First, how do you feel when you see a beautiful sunset? Second, how do you feel after running a marathon? And third, explain the concept of love. Here's three responses. When I see a beautiful sunset, I feel peaceful. It's like time stops and worries disappear. The color blue reminds me of the clear sky on a sunny day or the calm waves at the beach. Love is kindness, affection, and strong attraction. It's about understanding, acceptance, and being willing to put others' needs before your own. Which of these was written by a human? And which was written by an AI, such as ChatGPT? Any ideas? The answer is, they're all AI, generated with GPT-4. Did you get that right? Could you tell the difference between a human and a machine? If you didn't, does that mean there's no difference? Does it matter? These are just some of the questions that Turing asks us. Next up, the Chinese room, a thought experiment somewhat rebutting the Turing test. Imagine yourself inside a room filled with Chinese symbols and a rule book for manipulating them. Someone outside the room hands you messages in Chinese under the door, and using the rule book or dictionary, you respond, creating the illusion that you understand the language. But inside the room, you have no understanding of Chinese whatsoever. You're just using a dictionary. The Chinese room challenges us to consider the difference between simulating understanding and genuine comprehension. What does it mean to truly know something? Can a machine ever understand or would only ever simulate understanding? How do we distinguish between the appearance of intelligence and genuine consciousness? These questions lead us down paths that question the very fabric of our thoughts and perceptions. Have you ever known everything about something without experiencing it? That's the question at the heart of the black and white room experiment, also known as Mary's room. Imagine a scientist, her name is Mary, who knows every physical fact about color, but has never seen color herself. She lives in a black and white room and learns everything through black and white resources like photographs or books. And upon leaving the room and experiencing color for the first time, does she learn anything new? This thought experiment delves into the nature of understanding, challenging our concepts of objective knowledge 
and subjective experience. The implications of this thought experiment are far-reaching. Can objective knowledge capture subjective experience? What does this mean for AI, which can possess all factual knowledge but lacks all personal experience? How do we reconcile these ideas in our own lives? Consider Deep Blue and AlphaGo, the famous chess and Go AI models, respectively. They can be seen as real-world examples of the black and white room experiment. These models have been trained to play chess and Go at levels surpassing human grandmasters. But do they truly know the games? Deep Blue knows every possible move in chess. AlphaGo can predict and respond to nearly every possible scenario in Go. But do they comprehend what they're doing in the same way that humans do? Do they recognize they're playing a game? Does that matter? Deep Blue and AlphaGo highlight the complexities in the relationship between knowledge, understanding, and experience. While they have the ability to outperform human players, their understanding of the game may be considered superficial, lacking the intrinsic human connection to the game's history, art, and culture, which raises profound questions about the nature of intelligence, understanding, success. Can a machine ever truly know something, or is it merely executing patterns and algorithms without genuine comprehension? And if our brains were also electrical circuits with biological wires rather than synthetic ones, how are we any different? These questions reach beyond mere philosophical musings and have practical implications in the development and deployment of AI systems. They challenge us to reflect on what it means to know, understand, and experience something, and how these concepts relate to both human intelligence and artificial intelligence. As we continue to advance in the field of AI, these considerations guide our ethical frameworks, our system design, and our understanding of the potential and limitations of machine intelligence. The singularity is a concept that has captured imaginations and sparked debates across various disciplines. It's the hypothetical point in time when AI surpasses human intelligence. Imagine a future where machines become recursively self-improving, leading to rapid and unfathomable advancements. But it's more than just a technological milestone. It's a philosophical crossroads. Some people consider this concept the worst case scenario for AI, because if such a system exists and its goals are not perfectly aligned with ours, it could act in ways detrimental to humanity to achieve its objectives. See the paperclip scenario from the beginning of the video. It might even resist attempts to shut it down or modify its goals, recognizing efforts as threats to its own objectives. This scenario, while speculative and debated within the AI community, underscores the critical importance of AI alignment and the profound implications that it holds for our future. What happens when machines are smarter than us? How will our society, laws, ethics, and even our own sense of identity change? Will we control these machines, or will they transcend our understanding? Hi, I'm Amelia Chavorsky, and I'm the director of the Futures Program at a nonprofit organization called the Future of Life Institute. Our organization seeks to both mitigate the large-scale risks of emerging technologies as well as steer technology development towards a positive, safe, and beneficial future. By background, I am a physician and a scientist who has worked in biomedical innovation for over a decade, both as an academic and as an entrepreneur. In recent years, I've also been focusing on the potential risks of artificial intelligence or AI. The intersection of AI and biotechnology presents another layer of risk that is both fascinating and deeply concerning. As AI systems become more advanced, their potential applications in the field of biotechnology grow exponentially. This promises breakthroughs in medicine, agriculture, and environmental sciences. But it also opens the door to more sinister possibilities, such as the development of advanced bioweapons. 
Imagine an AI system capable of designing pathogens that are more potent, contagious, and resistant to current medical treatments. Such a system could be exploited to create biological weapons of unprecedented power and specificity. This risk is not just theoretical. The advances in gene editing technologies like CRISPR, combined with AI's data analysis capabilities, make this a plausible near future scenario. The ethical, humanitarian, and security implications are staggering, raising urgent questions about meaningful regulation, oversight, and international cooperation to prevent misuse. The concept of AI developed bioweapons adds a new dimension to the ongoing discussions about AI risk and increasingly advanced AI development. It serves as a sobering reminder that as we push the boundaries of what AI can do, we also must be vigilant in addressing and mitigating the risks involved along the way. The stakes are incredibly high, and the ethical, humanitarian, and security considerations are complex, necessitating a multidisciplinary approach to ensure that AI is developed and deployed responsibly. Moral status refers to the degree of value or worth attributed to an entity within ethical considerations, determining how it should be treated and what rights and protections it should be afforded. In the context of AI personhood, moral status becomes a pivotal question. If an AI system were to be granted moral status, it would imply that the system has intrinsic value independent of its utility to human beings, and therefore deserves ethical consideration. This challenges traditional notions that only beings with consciousness, emotions, or the ability to suffer have moral status. The debate over the moral status of AI systems touches on profound philosophical inquiries into the nature of consciousness, sentience, and existence. It also raises questions, for me at least, about what characteristics qualify as an entity for moral consideration and how these might apply to non-human artificially created beings. The discussion of moral status in AI is not just theoretical, it has practical implications for how we design, use, and regulate AI systems. Think of Frankenstein, for example, reflecting these broader societal values and principles. But the question of personhood for AI is more than just a legal or technical issue. It's a profound ethical dilemma that challenges our fundamental concepts of rights, obligations, and empathy. Imagine a future where AI systems are autonomous, exhibiting behaviors that we associate with sentient beings like humans. Should we grant AI's rights? Should we afford them protections? Should we afford them respect? What criteria should we use to determine moral or legal status, period? How do we balance the needs and rights of human beings? with our responsibilities towards increasingly sophisticated non-human entities, especially if we made them. This is not a mere academic exercise. It's a pressing moral challenge that could reshape our laws, our society, and our relationship with technology. Here are some arguments for and against. First, in favor of granting AI personhood. Proponents of granting personhood to AI systems based their arguments on several compelling reasons. First, they point to the potential for advanced AI to possess consciousness or self-awareness, thus deserving rights and protections similar to humans. They also argue that recognizing AI's personhood could prevent potential mistreatment or exploitation of highly sophisticated systems. Granting legal status to AI might facilitate smoother interactions in legal and commercial environments, making AI entities accountable and responsible in ways similar to corporations. Proponents also believe that personhood for AI encourages ethical development and deployment, ensuring that creators and users trust these systems with respect and dignity. Finally, recognizing AI as entities with certain rights might foster empathy and compassion leading to a more humane approach to technology. Now, let's look at the opposing side against granting AI personhood. Opponents of granting AI personhood counter these arguments with several concerns of their own. 
First, they contend that even the most advanced AI lacks genuine emotions, consciousness, or intentions, and thus cannot be equated to humans in moral or legal terms. Or at the very least, they can't, we can't prove it has consciousness or not. They also worry that assigning personhood to AI could dilute human rights, undermining the unique moral status of human beings. Additionally, critics argue that AI personhood might create legal and ethical confusion, blurring the lines between objects and subjects of law, leading to unforeseen consequences. Opponents emphasize that granting AI legal status might shift responsibility away from the human creators and users, making accountability more challenging. Furthermore, they warn that equating AI with personhood could lead to a very slippery slope, where other non-human entities might claim similar rights, further complicating our legal and ethical frameworks. Together, these arguments illustrate the complexities and nuances of the question of personhood for AI. They invite us to carefully consider the implications of our technological advancements and how they intersect with our legal and social norms. The reality is, it's really difficult to tell if AI has consciousness or sentience when we don't even agree on how to define those terms. My personal belief is that the difference between AI and humans is not something we have, but something we're limited by. In our human case, that's time. For AIs, it's energy. Regardless, the debate over AI personhood will probably continue as the technology evolves, prompting us to revisit and possibly even redefine our understanding of rights, responsibilities, and what it even means to be a person. Now, we'll venture into the practical impacts AI has on sectors like healthcare, education, finance, employment, and more. Imagine a world where AI influences every aspect of our lives from our health and education to our work in legal systems. Wait, you're already living in it. What ethical considerations arise as AI becomes more embedded in these areas? How do we ensure fairness, transparency, accountability, and empathy? How do we navigate the balance between efficiency and ethics, innovation and integrity? Whether you're contributing to the development of AI systems or policies, these questions are significant. AI in healthcare offers transformative potential. This sector holds an incredibly important place in our society as it directly impacts virtually everyone's lives. From early diagnosis to personalized treatment, AI is revolutionizing the way we approach medical care. Let's break it down. Diagnosis. AI can analyze scans and medical images for signs of diseases such as cancer, providing faster and more accurate detection. For instance, deep learning models are now being used to detect diabetic retinopathy, greatly assisting ophthalmologists in early intervention. In treatment, AI systems support physicians in selecting personalized treatment plans, tailoring the approach to the individual's unique needs. Watson, for oncology, is an example, assisting oncologists with personalized cancer treatment recommendations. In research, the applications of AI and medical research are groundbreaking. AlphaFold's prediction of the 3D structure of proteins has revolutionized bioinformatics, potentially accelerating drug discovery and understanding of various diseases. The integration of AI in healthcare brings unique ethical challenges. Let's start with data privacy. With the massive collection of personal healthcare data, ensuring patient confidentiality becomes a pretty big priority. For example, a breach in a hospital's patient record system could expose sensitive information, eroding trust in the institution. We can also talk about bias in data sets. AI systems can inadvertently perpetuate biases of trained on skewed or non-diverse data sets. Some more specific examples could be race bias, where an AI model trained primarily on Caucasian skin might misdiagnose skin conditions in people with darker skin tones. Or sex bias, a lack of representation of women in certain medical data sets 
could lead to inaccurate diagnoses and treatment for female patients. For example, heart disease system symptoms might manifest differently in women, but if the data is heavily biased towards male participants, the AI system might overlook these differences. We can also talk about age bias. If an AI system is trained mainly on data from younger patients, it might struggle to recognize and treat conditions that are more prevalent or manifest differently in older individuals. Informed consent is another issue. Patients must be adequately informed about how their data is used and have the opportunity to consent to it. Without transparent communication, there's a risk of undermining patient autonomy. Accessibility and equality is important because ensuring that AI-driven healthcare solutions are available to all regardless of socioeconomic status is critical. Compliance with legal regulations is really important in healthcare. Here are a couple major privacy laws that AI systems currently need to comply with. The first is called HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, which in the United States safeguards patients' medical records and other health information, setting the standard for data privacy. The second is called GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, which in Europe protects and empowers all EU citizens' data privacy, including health information. You know those annoying banners at the bottom of websites that ask you to let the website collect cookies? That's also GDPR. Now let's look at a specific case study, IBM Watson in healthcare. This technology demonstrates both the promise and the complexities of AI in medicine. Watson for Oncology is a cognitive computing system designed to support oncologists in identifying potential treatment options for individual cancer patients. By analyzing vast amounts of medical literature, clinical guidelines, and patient-specific data, Watson can assist doctors in navigating the complex landscape of cancer care. Its ability to process information at a speed unattainable by humans represents a significant advancement in personalized medicine. One notable benefit of Watson for Oncology is its capacity to bring world-class cancer treatment expertise to remote or underserved areas. By providing access to up-to-date medical knowledge, it helps level the playing field ensuring that patients everywhere can receive state-of-the-art care. However, Watson's integration into healthcare has not been without criticism. Some medical professionals have raised concerns about the transparency of Watson's decision-making process, questioning how exactly it arrives at a particular recommendation. This black box nature can lead to skepticism and reluctance among those who are accustomed to evidence-based practices. The success of Watson in real world clinical settings has been mixed. While some institutions praise its contributions, others have found it less useful or even discordant with human experts' opinions. So while IBM Watson in healthcare presents a fascinating glimpse into the future of medicine, where AI systems could play a pivotal role in diagnosis and treatment, it also shows the importance of collaboration, rigorous validation, and ethical consideration. It's a testament to both the potential and the pitfalls of AI in one of the most sensitive and vital areas of human life. AI in healthcare holds tremendous promise, but it also poses ethical and legal questions that are complex. As we continue to innovate, we must do so with care, responsibility, and a focus on human well-being. Next, we'll explore AI in the sphere of education. In the realm of personalized learning, AI is making strides by creating customized educational plans tailored to individual students. These plans adapt to students' unique learning styles and paces, offering a more engaging and effective education at times. For instance, tools like Dreambox are transforming math education by adapting content to the student's specific level, making learning more relevant and more dynamic. But beyond personalization, AI is also assisting in content development. By harnessing algorithms and data, 
educators can design materials that are engaging and tailored to meet the diverse needs of their students. Various content technologies are emerging, such as platforms that help educators craft interactive learning materials, ensuring that content remains fresh, relevant, and inspiring. Imagine granting every person in the world access to a personal tutor. That's what AI can accomplish if developed and deployed properly. Fidutom, my organization, which Seth introduced earlier, was able to accomplish this on a smaller scale using ChatGPT. We developed an application that uses the machine learning model behind ChatGPT called GPT-4 that allows students to generate curricula on any topic from crowdsourced content. This platform enabled us to ensure that reputable, factual, and accessible content was streamlined to the students. We brought the tool along with free access to ChatGPT Plus from OpenAI to nearly 2,400 students from underserved backgrounds, and some of them were able to jump grade levels ahead in math and English comprehension content and learn about topics they didn't have the teaching capacity or textbooks for, from financial literacy to menstrual health to climate change, all within a span of four months and using those two platforms. As general purpose AI continues to scale and become more reliable, we imagine that this type of education could be a reality for millions, if not billions of students in the future. As AI becomes more influential in the educational landscape, it's important to recognize and address ethical concerns. Biases are a significant issue, mirroring similar challenges in healthcare. If AI systems are trained on biased data, they can inadvertently reinforce stereotypes and inequalities, failing to cater effectively to a diverse student body. For instance, gender biases in algorithms could lead to differentiated treatment of male and female students in a way that reflects existing societal biases. Accessibility is another essential consideration. The potential benefits of AI in education must be available to students from all socioeconomic backgrounds, Ensuring equal access to these revolutionary tools is crucial to avoid widening existing educational disparities. The goal, ultimately, is to leverage AI to uplift and empower, not to exclude or marginalize people. Still, the potential upsides are currently outpacing fears of how AI will fundamentally alter education. There are some cases where students in particular are not big fans. Online proctoring is now a staple in modern education, especially in remote learning environments. AI-driven systems can monitor students during exams, analyzing behaviors and patterns to prevent cheating. While this technology has proven effective in maintaining academic integrity, it's not without ethical challenges. Data privacy is a major concern here. The surveillance required for online proctoring can be seen as intrusive, collecting sensitive information that must be handled with utmost care. Furthermore, biases can creep into these systems as well. Algorithms may be more likely to flag students of particular ethnic backgrounds or those with disabilities, leading to unfair scrutiny. Online proctoring encapsulates the broader themes of our exploration of AI and education. The promise and the potential are enormous but the ethical considerations are equally significant. As we continue to innovate and integrate AI into our classrooms and curricula, we must do so with a mindful and responsible approach, ensuring that we harness technology to enhance education, not hinder it. The finance sector is already an industry transformed by AI. Let's take a closer look at two significant applications algorithmic trading and fraud detection. Algorithmic trading represents one of the most striking uses of AI in finance. By employing intricate algorithms, hedge funds and other financial institutions can execute high-frequency trading strategies. An example of this is hedge funds that use artificial intelligence-driven algorithms to make rapid buying and selling decisions, capitalizing on minute price changes. This technology streamlines trading, but as we'll see, it also presents unique ethical dilemmas. Fraud detection is another compelling application of AI in the financial world. By monitoring the transactions in real time, AI can detect and prevent fraudulent activities, 
enhancing the security and integrity of our financial systems. Credit card companies, for instance, use sophisticated AI systems to spot suspicious transactions and act swiftly to protect customers. The integration of AI in finance has brought with it several ethical concerns unique to the sector. First, let's discuss market manipulation. The speed and sophistication of AI trading algorithms present opportunities for manipulation. These algorithms can be employed to create false market trends or to spoof the market, wherein large buy or sell orders are placed and then quickly canceled to deceive other traders. This kind of manipulation can lead to distorted prices and undermine the integrity of financial markets. It raises questions about transparency, fairness, and the adequacy of existing regulatory measures. Data security is another major concern. In a world where personal and corporate financial information is entrusted to AI systems, the stakes for securing this data are incredibly high. Breaches can lead not only to financial loss, but to a loss of trust in financial institutions. And so protecting this data requires an unprecedented level of security measures, robust encryption, and constant vigilance against ever-evolving cyber threats. The ethical responsibility extends to ensuring that AI systems are transparent in how they handle data and comply with relevant privacy laws. Another issue centers around accountability and responsibility. With AI algorithms making critical financial decisions, questions arise about who is responsible when things go wrong. Is it the developers of the algorithms? Is it the institutions using them? Or someone else? The lines of responsibility can be blurred, complicating regulatory oversight. Finally, we must think about issues of economic inequality and accessibility. As AI drives more financial decision-making, there's a risk that those without access to these technologies are left behind. Ensuring that the benefits and protections of AI and finance are available to all, not just the technologically advanced, is an ethical imperative. The flash crash of 2010 serves as a dramatic illustration of all of these ethical concerns. On May 6, 2010, the Dow Jones Industrial Average plummeted over 1,000 points, losing over $1 trillion in just minutes, only to rebound almost as quickly. What caused this crazy event? An investigation revealed that a large sell order executed by an algorithm triggered a cascade of selling by other algorithms, leading to a rapid and terrifying drop in market prices. But the flash crash wasn't just a technical glitch. It revealed fundamental vulnerabilities in a system heavily reliant on AI-driven trading. It showed how algorithms reacting to each other in unexpected ways could create a feedback loop of selling that spiraled out of control. The incident sparked a debate about the lack of transparency in algorithmic trading and raised questions about the adequacy of regulatory oversight. How could such a system be safeguarded against manipulation? What measures were in place to prevent a repeat of this event? Well, for one, circuit breakers were implemented, which effectively pause trading in a security if its price moves too much in a short period. The flash crash led to reforms and new regulations aimed at increasing transparency and stability in algorithmic trading. But it also served as a stark warning of the potential dangers of unchecked AI in finance emphasizing the need for careful consideration and robust safeguards in our financial systems. The employment arena is rapidly evolving with artificial intelligence playing a pivotal role. This is why AI in the workforce is among FIDUTOM's and many civil society organizations' key priorities. In recruitment, AI streamlines operations, sifts through applications, and even conducts preliminary interviews via AI-driven chatbots. Tools like HireVue allow for assessing candidates' fit through video interviews. Pactum AI introduces an innovative approach by automating salary negotiations, eliminating the stress of face-to-face -face discussions on this very delicate matter. By doing so, the company aims to minimize gender and possibly racial biases in wage determinations, entrusting these decisions to a seemingly impartial, non-human mediator. 
These advancements not only expedite hiring and employment processes, but also offer a promising reduction in human prejudices, showcasing just a glimpse of the potential AI holds in this domain if implemented properly. Performance analysis is another area where AI has made inroads. Analyzing the vast amounts of employee data, AI systems can recognize trends and patterns, identifying those who might benefit from support or training. Systems like ADP's AI-driven workforce analytics provide real-time insights fostering growth and productivity. While these developments promise enhanced efficiency, they also raise serious ethical considerations. The automation of tasks traditionally performed by humans may lead to job displacement, requiring a delicate balance between technological advancement and the human cost. Bias in recruiting algorithms, often inadvertently perpetuated, can have detrimental effects on gender, race, age, or other factors. This emphasizes the necessity for careful construction and ongoing monitoring of these systems. AI development quite literally hinges on continuous data input and refinement. This need has unintentionally birthed digital sweatshops in places like the Philippines and Sub-Saharan Africa. Prominent companies have been linked to partnerships with AI supply chain entities such as Sama. These businesses exploit labor by assigning critical content moderation tasks to workers, paying them well below the minimum wage. Beyond economic disadvantages, these jobs have a severe mental toll, and workers can confront disturbing and harmful content from AI platforms. These efforts to improve moderation technologies ensure that when these technologies, such as ChatGPT, are rolled out to the general public, they are significantly safer and can't be used for unethical purposes. However, the well-being and economic opportunity of these digital laborers could be compromised in the process. There's still little regulation or intervention in this space, and the companies involved have yet to face any tangible consequences. Just as AI can displace jobs or lead to worker exploitation, there has been a growing push for technology-based solutions to economically support the most vulnerable, many of whom will find their jobs displaced without concessions for upskilling or working in these digital sweatshops. Leading this movement are initiatives like the proposed AI Windfall Clause, which suggests taxing AI-generated profits to fund societal wellness programs. WorldCoin, Fidutam, and Karya present different approaches to this challenge. WorldCoin offers cryptocurrency shares in exchange for iris scans, aiming to democratize financial systems. Fidutam's developer arm provides digital identification and microloans to the unbanked, with the eventual goal of integrating them into the formal banking system and serving as a potential proof of concept for an AI-funded universal basic income. Karya, on the other hand, offers Indian workers the opportunity to earn above the minimum wage by providing voice recordings, which are then used to enhance voice recognition systems in AI. The ethical dimensions of these initiatives are vast. While WorldCoin promises financial inclusion, it grapples with issues of data privacy, informed consent, and potential exploitation of economically vulnerable populations. Despite focusing on data privacy, we at Fidutom still face challenges with verifiability and multinational financial policy compliance with our systems. Meanwhile, Karya's approach, though seemingly beneficial, could lead to questions about the fair evaluation of voice data and the broader implications of commodifying native languages for AI purposes, despite them being a nonprofit. These ventures highlight the need to tread carefully, weighing the benefits against the inherent ethical risks in AI-driven compensation systems. That being said, they will emerge as vitally important as AI continues to proliferate in our social world. Privacy is also at the forefront of ethical considerations. The balance between an employer's need for information and an employee's right to privacy must be finely tuned. Alongside privacy, ensuring equality and accessibility in AI tools across all socioeconomic backgrounds is a vital ethical consideration. The application of AI in recruitment offers both exciting opportunities and cautionary tales. Companies like Unilever have embraced AI, achieving significant efficiencies in time and cost. However, this promising landscape isn't without pitfalls. Amazon's experience offers a critical case study. Their AI recruitment tool, designed to streamline the hiring process, was found to be biased against women. Despite efforts to correct the system, 
The biases persisted, and Amazon eventually abandoned the tool. This situation showed how a seemingly neutral algorithm can replicate human prejudices if not carefully managed. It also illustrates that the very fine line between efficiency and fairness, potential, and prudence. The lessons learned from Amazon's experience here are a stark reminder of the need for vigilance and transparency in AI's application in recruiting. AI's role in shaping the future of work is undeniable. From personalized recruitment to continuous performance analysis, the promise is great, but so are the responsibilities. The choices made today will shape tomorrow's jobs. The integration of AI and employment is not merely a technological evolution, it's a societal transformation that requires thoughtful engagement with ethical considerations and a commitment to shaping a future that enhances rather than diminishes our working lives. The growing implementation of AI automation in various industries is both an opportunity and a challenge. On one hand, it can create efficiencies, drive innovation, and free up human workers from mundane or repetitive tasks, allowing them to engage in more creative or hopefully fulfilling work. On the other hand, there is a tangible fear of job loss, particularly in sectors where automation can easily replace human labor entirely. The displacement of workers due to technological advancements has become a crucial concern, leading to debates on how best to retrain and support those whose roles are being phased out. Addressing the potential for job loss requires proactive planning and policymaking. As AI continues to change the employment landscape, there must be concerted efforts to provide education and training and support to workers transitioning into new roles. The integration of AI should be accompanied by a human-centric approach that values and invests in the workforce, ensuring that people aren't left behind in the march towards progress. Collaboration between governments, industries, and educational institutions are important in creating a resilient labor market that can adapt to the changing nature of work, striking a balance between technological advancement and human well-being. Hi, everyone. My name is Sneha Ravenor, and I am the founder and president of ENCODE Justice, the world's first and largest youth movement for human-centered artificial intelligence. We're working to set rules of the road for AI by educating policymakers and the public about the social, political, and environmental implications of increasingly powerful AI systems. There are a few thorny questions we're still up against when it comes to regulating AI. How do we translate abstract notions of fairness into quantifiable benchmarks that machines can process? How do we ensure that models are safe, trustworthy, and reliable without hampering innovation at a time when global powers are approaching an AI arms race? How do we balance the desire for explainable outcomes with the importance of intellectual property protections, especially when so many models are proprietary? And most crucially, as AI models become increasingly advanced, how do we design agile structures of governance that can keep pace? Learning to govern this moving target is quickly becoming one of the heftiest regulatory challenges of our time. Responsibility and accountability in the age of AI are multifaceted and complex. Who takes the fall when an AI system fails or causes harm? In the case of an autonomous vehicle, the more important question isn't what the car does in some hypothetical trolley problem, but who's responsible in the aftermath? Is it the developer who programmed the algorithms, the company that deployed it, or perhaps even the AI system itself? Who volunteers as tribute? This debate has profound implications for law, ethics, and society. As AI systems become more advanced and autonomous, traditional legal frameworks may be insufficient to address new scenarios. Remember how we previously discussed legal personhood for AI? Here's another reason that could be relevant. If AIs were almost akin to corporations, it would open up an entirely new dimension of legal options. Understanding these intricacies is key to creating a responsible AI-driven future. AI governance isn't just about legal compliance. It's about building a holistic ecosystem that balances the innovative potential of AI with ethical considerations and societal needs. 
Internal governance includes policies within an organization to guide AI development and use, ensuring alignment with ethical principles, safety standards, and societal values. On the other hand, external oversight incorporates third-party audits, certifications, and regulatory bodies that maintain industry standards. Together, these elements form a cohesive governance framework that supports responsible AI development. This multifaceted approach recognizes that AI is not any one thing, but rather a diverse field of varying applications, each requiring nuanced understanding and regulation. AI ethics codes and standards are foundational in shaping the moral fabric of the technology. Various organizations, governments, and industry groups are working to develop these guidelines, reflecting a concerted global effort to align AI development with human values. These codes not only address immediate ethical concerns, but also seek to anticipate future challenges and possibilities. They often focus on principles like transparency, accountability, privacy, and fairness. The development of globally accepted standards is an ongoing process involving continuous dialogue between technologists, ethicists, policymakers, and the broader public. It's an essential step towards a future where AI serves as a force for positive good. Governments around the world are actively grappling with how to regulate AI, and their approaches vary widely. The challenge lies in creating policies that promote innovation while protecting citizens and upholding societal values. Some governments encourage a free market approach, fostering growth, while others adopt more strict regulations to ensure compliance and public safety. This global web of AI policies reflects varying cultural, political, social, and economic contexts, each contributing to a complex tapestry of regulation. The United States defines its approach to AI regulation with a commitment to human rights, transparency, and accountability. Emphasizing entrepreneurial spirit and innovation, the U.S. fosters an environment conducive to AI advancement through programs like the American Artificial Intelligence Initiative, which focuses on R&D investment and ethical guidelines. And through consultation with a number of civil society groups, the White House released a Bill of Rights for an Automated Society, outlining principles for the responsible development, provenance, and use of AI systems. In addition, the White House notched an agreement with a number of leading tech firms like Anthropic, Meta, Google, and OpenAI. These companies signed on to a set of voluntary commitments, including things like stronger cybersecurity protections and a watermarking system to distinguish AI-generated content. Federal agencies, including the National Institute of Standards and Technology, actively work to develop standards and best practices. State governments, alongside industry groups, contribute to this collaborative ecosystem through local regulations and initiatives. Simultaneously, the U.S. recognizes the need for ethical guardrails and principles like non-discrimination in AI, and strives to balance innovation with the protection of these democratic principles. This dynamic and multifaceted approach aims to make the U.S. a global leader in AI, setting trends and influencing international norms around its development. The European Union's stance on AI regulation is characterized by a strong emphasis on privacy, human rights, and comprehensive oversight. The EU has been at the forefront of crafting regulations like the General Data Protection Regulation, or the GDPR, which has set global standards for data protection. In April 2021, the European Commission proposed new rules specifically targeting AI, focusing on transparency, accountability, and risk management. Unlike a solely free market approach, the EU integrates ethical considerations at every stage of AI development, seeking to create a landscape that reflects democratic values. Initiatives like the High-Level Expert Group on Artificial Intelligence further underline the EU's commitment to a responsible and human-centric approach to AI. Collaborative efforts across member states and a focus on both innovation and accountability make the EU's approach a model for global AI governance. China's AI regulatory landscape is unique, reflecting its socio-political context, national priorities, and an integrated approach to technological governance. Several initiatives and policies highlight the country's approach to AI regulation. China's approach integrates AI development with national priorities, emphasizing state control. The government plays an active role in shaping AI's direction, leveraging it as a tool for social development and global competitiveness. 
To understand China's approach, you must appreciate its blend of governance, national priorities, and cultural values, which offer insights into an alternative model of governance. The final AI policy case study we're going to look at are the two schools of thought when it comes to approaching AI regulation. In the rapidly progressing AI landscape, two distinct viewpoints have become especially pronounced. The first are algorithmic justice and freedom fighters, with advocates like Timnit Gebru and Joy Buolamwini. They're concerned with the immediate challenges of AI, like algorithmic fairness, data privacy, and the displacement of jobs. On the other hand, the long-termism group, often linked to prominent figures like Elon Musk, contemplate the broader, future-oriented implications, especially the potential threats posed by strong AI and super AI that might surpass human capabilities and intentions. While both groups are certainly championing valid concerns, their differing focal points can lead to friction in both discourse and policy priorities. Those advocating for algorithmic justice feel that the long-termists might sideline pressing social and ethical issues by concentrating on more distant and speculative threats. However, in contrast, long-termists emphasize preemptive measures to stave off any catastrophic outcomes in the AI-driven future. It's vital to recognize that the two perspectives can coexist and potentially even complement each other. Addressing algorithmic justice issues today can pave the way for AI alignment in the future, ensuring that AI technologies are both fair and safe. It's also worth noting that skepticism towards long-termism sometimes stems from the knowledge that some of the early figures in AI long-termism had racist beliefs. This historical backdrop underscores the importance of prioritizing ethics and inclusivity in today's AI discussions, irrespective of the group's primary focus. That being said, we must be careful about what we prioritize when it comes to regulation to ensure that both short-term and long-term harms are accurately addressed and then redressed. 2023 marks the first ever Global AI Safety Summit, held in London by UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who committed publicly to making the UK the geographical and intellectual home of AI governance. The summit and future iterations of it are dedicated to convening leaders from around the world to craft regulations for frontier AI models. Now more than ever, intergovernmental coordination on AI has become paramount. An AI arms race may already be underway between global powers like the US and China. Buy-in from rival states will be necessary to rein in AI development, especially as current uses like autonomous weapons and future ones like AI-powered cyber attacks threaten to undermine the world order. The UN has even moved to establish a high-level advisory body on artificial intelligence, mirroring a similar body in the EU. There is an incredibly wide range of regulatory approaches and human rights environments to consider. For instance, with the AI Act, the EU has explicitly rejected AI-based surveillance through technologies like facial recognition, though similar systems are still in use by a number of governments around the world. It remains to be seen how exactly competing national interests and strategies will shape global AI governance. Thank you for joining me for this course up until this point. As we look towards the future of AI and ethical AI development, we'll recap some essential themes, challenges, and opportunities. From its applications in various sectors to the governing principles that must guide its evolution, let's bring together the insights we've gained throughout this course. AI's future is poised to be transformative. Ongoing advancements such as quantum computing are expanding AI's capabilities, while applications like space exploration offer new frontiers. AI is not just a technology of the future, though. It's shaping our present, influencing sectors from healthcare, finance, education, to employment. The potential for innovation is vast, but our ethical considerations must be at the core of progress. Ethical AI development is not merely a preference, it's an imperative. As we've explored in various contexts, the ethical considerations in AI are multifaceted, including accountability, biases, accessibility, data security, and legal personhood. Ensuring that AI development aligns with human values and societal needs is vital to harnessing AI's benefits while mitigating risk. The development of AI isn't confined to technology experts. 
It requires the engagement of governments, private sectors, academia, civil society, and more. Different perspectives contribute to a richer and more balanced approach to AI. Collaboration across sectors fosters innovation, sets appropriate guidelines, ensures inclusivity, and resonates with this complex tapestry of AI applications and ethical considerations that we've explored. Public awareness and education are integral to the responsible growth of AI. An informed public can shape policies, advocate for ethical considerations, and contribute to a culture of responsible innovation. Education, both formal and informal, equips individuals with the knowledge and critical thinking required to navigate our AI-driven world. It bridges the gap between technological advancements and societal readiness. So in other words, it's a plug to share this course with friends. But with major cultural moments such as the launch of ChatGPT, we're starting to see the general public catching on to AI. That means you, dear viewer, by watching this video course, you're already in the top percentile of people who have knowledge about this space. Congratulations. AI offers unprecedented opportunities to tackle global challenges. However, deploying AI for social good isn't without its own challenges. From the technological barriers to ethical complexities, AI's role in global problem solving requires a nuanced understanding of both its capabilities and its limitations. The strategies, case studies, and ethical debates that we've discussed throughout this course illuminate the dynamics at play and leveraging AI for the greater good. Thank you again to Free Code Camp for supporting the development of this course. An extra special thanks to all the people that were involved in the creation of this video, including all of our speakers, Okezwe, Sneha, and Emilia, and other content reviewers, including Jenny Duan, Aiden Eagle, and Kate Mayer. And if you want to dig much deeper, Free Code Camp has another course focusing on AI safety that you should check out. Signing off.